Uh, another Twitter writer said, Toby, did you see that worldwide Wob criticized he fans for chanting overrated at game four? Did he want to uh, did he want to spit on the Bucks? Heat fans were best behaved over the past weekend. Uh, well, the thing that was weird about it, uh, I, what is his, his his handle? I'm Smash Bro underscore. Got to get some of these silly names. Um, the thing that was that was bad about it, that was the only I think bad moment this week of the Heat. It's not one to overly criticize. Uh, you know that worldwide wob. I mean, he, you know he's out there filming everybody. Plus, he's a Knicks fan anyway, so. You know, take that for what it's worth when you're talking about judging. Maybe he does want some spitting. That's probably how he likes his fans to behave, you know, with saliva. But the only thing that was dumb about it, and it was our only bad moment of the week because we did the counter. Genius. You know the you know uh, other fans are going to steal that. That's ours. Same thing they did with Paul Pierce sucks, by the way. Um, You know, I thought just great energy all around from the crowd. I thought that we were classy to uh, to. I was worried that the, the, the fans were going to boo the heat off the court. I was happy that they gave that they applauded them. No, that, that's big because, three era. That's in the big three era. Yeah, I was happy they applauded them simply because we never got the chance to for their finals run last year. I know people are tired about talking about last year, but it is like, look, Spo said afterwards, Robbie, he didn't even know it was Memorial Day weekend after the after the uh, after the game. He didn't even know. He, like they're that they're that spun out of what is the schedule. He said like the players look it up and like it's Memorial. Day. We like they haven't stopped playing basketball. Nobody. The Bucks got to everybody else who wasn't in that conference finals. Really, even in the and and then on top of that, the finals, uh, they haven't stopped. And even LeBron and Anthony Davis got a break because they missed half the season. But um, the only thing that was dumb, to get to my point, the only thing that was dumb about the chant, you were chanting overrated, down three zero. So I don't know if it was generally towards the Bucks. I thought it was towards the guy who was at the line, which was Chris Middleton. And Chris Middleton, if anything, is probably on the all underrated team in the NBA. Yeah, he's kicking our ass. And he's kicking our ass. So it was a dumb it was a dumb chant for that guy at the line and also down 3 0. It was a bad it was a stupid move. And really, ever since they did that move, he turned it on and really stuck it in us. Oh, so was that in the first half when the Heater were up and playing well up by like twelve points? Yeah. Yeah, it made no sense. It made no – it didn't make sense for the guy. It didn't make sense for the situation. It didn't make sense at all. We had a lot of good moments, but that one was a swing and a miss. That was a swing and a miss. Yeah. We, we, we even, I thought we were even decent with the MVP chance this week. You know, well, Jimmy was Bielitza. getting some MVP chance. Well, Bielitsa, <laughs> that was just funny. That was just to entertain ourselves. But uh, but I thought even with uh, – I thought even with uh, giving Jimmy his, his MVP chance, even though <laughs> he certainly didn't play like an MVP in this series – um that was uh that was for me that was for me uh that was for me the only the only whiff of the heat crowd this weekend um uh kane fan 1272 says sad we might lose my favorite heat player kendrick nunions yeah kendrick had a nice uh, had a nice game four he uh he showed the guts and there's talks that he's gonna get like 15 million in free agency per year which is not surprising i think like I think I got like Kendrick Nunn. First of all, 15 million is not what 50 million as crazy as it is in the NBA. 50 million is not what 50 million used to be. Like LeBron didn't even make 15 million with the Heat with his first contract. Like the NBA money is crazy. Wait, the co- Coward actually writes articles? There's no way. Uh, I didn't see him write an article about Heat fans. I saw him, I saw him tweet about the Heat fans. I think I thought we talked about this yeah, on uh, on Friday. He had a yeah, he had a stupid tweet about the Heat fans where he's like, oh. The Heat fans are uh, better at Twitter than actually showing up at the games. It's like, bro, all right, do you even have the volume up? The Heat fan was on fire in a game where they were getting drubbed the entire game, and they wouldn't they wouldn't stop cheering the entire time. And, and you can't really judge NBA attendance based on who's there and who's not. Like, you know, there's a lot of seats where you can't sit on. Like, there's a bunch of empty seats right behind the, the bench that, that, you know, that you're just not allowed to sit there. And well, just listen you, to the game, but like, 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 listen to the game. Like yeah. the game, like every, it was packed. Yeah, it was, it was packed, the, and it wasn't even like I told, I texted you guys on uh, on Sunday. I said a little bit more wine and cheese with the show up on Sunday, but it still ended up being a good crowd. But it was a little bit more of a vintage. Yeah. They show up late, but kind of expected. It's one, a, it's an afternoon game, one thirty. You're down three zero. I was, I was even worried. I was like, I hope, I hope that it's a good crowd today because I hope the Bucks fans uh, don't take over. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 it really didn't happen. It was still a lot of Heat fans that were there. Um, the only thing I think you know what screwed it up there was the air show this weekend. 
So it was it was a pain in the ass to get to the arena. Like I tried uh I even tried my secret entrance to get to the arena. Didn't work. It was like it was just it was jamming. It was it, it was jamming this year for the but um yeah, coward just Coward's just like it's it's just one of those takes where you're just like, all right, are you even watching, dude? Like, are you just you just like, hey, let's fire well, let's fire something off that's funny. And then and, 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 you know, it's just gotta help. I mean, I remember game three, they were like the way you could tell is if the, the black t shirt is on the seat and no one's there, that seat that's that seat is designed for somebody. So there was a couple of that, but game three, like I remember before the game, like you were telling me how the crowd was really into it and they were, they were yeah. like, hostile towards the uh Bucks. They were booing. They were great. Yeah, they boot them onto the court. They cheered their team. Like it was just, it was just a fantastic crowd all around. Um, so, whatever. I mean, it's just <laughs> like I said. Like I said, these P, Twitter, Twitter was like ready. You could just tell that Twitter was ready to jump on the heat. They were tired of hearing about the culture stuff. They they hate they love bashing our city, and that they were reveling in it. And look, the unfortunate part of it is when you get drubbed and you get kicked in the teeth and you lose by a margin of 20 and a half and you get swept and you get embarrassed you have to wear some of it now not from mo harkless <laughs> but you're gonna have to wear some of it like it's it's an embarrassing series loss and you deserve to get made fun of but let's make fun of the truth let's not like th- it always annoys me that what's happening in its time is embarrassing enough you don't also have to put on top of it lies. Like if you're Colin Coward and you want to say the crowd sucks, well, why are you saying things that aren't true? You you could go with the prototypical of this C team isn't good enough. This C team benefited from last year. Okay, I'm not going to question it too much. I don't agree with it, but at least I know people have been dying to get on this bubble frauds thing forever. Fine. You guys can have your day in the sun. The Bucks fan can have their day in the sun. But like you're going to go out there and you're going to question the Heat fan and how they perform or, or, or how they showed up that building was jumping from game three and they had two quarters in a total of eight that were enjoyable to watch yeah and they never stopped cheering their ass off and so everything that anybody has to say about the miami crowd is bull crap with 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 the national pundits so and the only bad moment they had is the one where they, they chanted for whatever reason overrated. overrated at chris middleson or the bucks i don't know who that was generated towards but it was a bad chant. Bad it timing. definitely got definitely got it was just you know what it was? That was the crowds uh throwing up the the mayor of Miami Dade. Like, hey, let's go to the mayor of Miami Dade. By the way, entertainment was mwah, spot on during the game. Still didn't get my golden oldies. I was hoping they were gonna be vaxxed ah. up and ready to go. Love the golden oldies. Missed them. Flying somebody texts in. They says, uh, take into consideration that Victor Oladipo was injured. Great on ball defender. That was a great hit. I think it was a bigger hit than we gave it credit for. I think the thing that you have to also realize, though, with Vic is, one, uh, according to the doctor that did his surgery, he doesn't even know how he was playing in the first place. So how I mean, Victor Oladipo, he had, like, one good game in his time with the Heat. He was really struggling. Um, so it makes it seem like – it makes it seem like that was a ticking time bomb to begin with with what was going on there. And then um, – you know, it's just hard for me to pull the Victor Oladipo card when he was on the heat for three seconds. Like, yes, you lose the depth of, I guess, Kelly Olynyk, and that's, I guess, a big blow, but I didn't like Kelly Olynyk playing anyway. Uh, I like, you know, I actually liked how the team was playing better with Trevor Ariza. Maybe it would have been better in this series for sure because of the size issues, but, you know, who knows? I mean, Eric Spolstra, like, he would go, you know, sometimes he would go to not playing Kelly O anyway. So you never, you never quite know. You never quite know, but I, I... yeah, Avery Bradley, he never played for the Heat either. Neither, oh, by the way, you see this Mo Harkless? What you he- see this Mo Mo Harkless? Mo Harkless after the Heat got swept. This dude, who who whose nickname should have been should have been DNP, <laughs> because he gave the Heat nothing. He tweeted out L O. L after the heat got swept. Oh, which, bro, first of all, you're Mo Harkless. All right. You did not, you did nothing for the Miami Heat. Nothing. In fact, Nemanja Bialica, in the only game that he got action, did more with those 17 minutes in his season with the Miami Heat than you did with the Miami Heat. You were terrible. 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 
I mean, he did. He Coach, did help us get Jimmy Butler in that tr- in that, in that trade. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the first. That was the first Mo Harkless trade. Yeah, not the not the second yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> Mo Harkless, who is a role player for the Kings, the lowest of the low in the NBA. There's nothing lower than being a role, role player, player for, for the, the Kings. Kings. There's nothing lower in the NBA. All right, you're one step away from the from the blue claws or the sky force. In fact, I'd rather play for the Sky Force because then there's at least a chance that I might play for the Miami Heat. There are people on the Sky Force that have a better chance of contributing than what Mo Harkless did for the Miami Heat in his tenure. And this guy has the audacity to tweet out L-O-L. What does the O stand for? The amount of points you scored most games? Minutes, please. Mo Harkless? More like no Harkless, as in no buckets, no contributions, no Harkless. Uh, I see. I see a couple of Twitchers. Mo Gutless, less Harkless. Uh, Mo helpless. Ross, Mo helpless. Mo yeah. Helpless. Mo helpless. Thanks for nothing. L O L. Glad your fingers work. Certainly did it on the court. <laughs> Trevor Ariza off the couch did more than you did, bro. Off the couch, Trevor Ariza contributed way more than you did. We were begging you to be in that role. Here, Mo Harkless, please take this role. You were a disaster, sir. A disa- it's like if Josh McRoberts were to laugh at the Heat struggles. Now he would never do that because the Heat have given him a lot of money for nothing. Oh. So I don't think I don't think Josh McR- Josh McRoberts would ever do that. But Mo Harkless is laughing at the. It was actually funny. It was it was interesting watching all of the laughter that the Heat had. Like people and people think I'm crazy with this stuff. That this is a, a filter or that I have a, a perspective that is just oh you're only saying this because you're you you root for Miami. And you're in Miami, so you feel like you have this. I'm telling you, people take more delight in the Heat's misery than they do in anybody else. Because the Boston Celtics are going to get laughed at like this. You know, the Knicks are going to. Oh, my God. The Knicks, they're going to have a few. What a great season by the Knicks, bro. The Mecca was back. This is back. Kawhi Leonard's going to want to come his. Like, (laughs) all right, bro. Congratulations. Hey. (laughs) You got gentlemen swept by the Hawks. Congratulations. Good for you, Knicks. (laughs) Beautiful season. You got destroyed by Trey Young. But people took extra delight. And Mo Harkless joined him. What's next, Mo Harkless? You want to tweet out a bubble guppies gif? Oh, Get the hell out of here, Mo Harkless. Who else wants to like I mean like who else like My- talk about a mo- like most no Myers Leonard would never do that. Loves the heat. Loves the you know, well, maybe not anymore. Well, it probably does. He probably has people on the heat that he loves. But Mo Harkless. Yeah, I mean, bro, you think you think that you uh, you think it was a you problem? You think that you were wrong down here? It's like it's like it's like Dion Waiters strutting around calling himself Champ Cheese. <laughs> Mo Harkless is going to be up there after uh, signing a ten day with the Lakers because they always doubt he's getting nothing but DMs. They always doubted me, but I'm Champ Harkless now. Champ. Oh, bro. Yeah, that was the one that probably annoyed me the most. It wasn't the Bucks fans. It wasn't uh it wasn't the national pundits. It was Mo Harkless. And then it, like, they annoyed you less less than the see, they were bubble frauds. We told you this whole time. It was inevitable. Like they listen, people didn't want to believe in the Heat's good season last year. I just don't buy into the bubble frauds thing. Like, what is it like like it's like what I talk like if you want to say they were bubble frauds. And you want to say that the whole thing was uh, was Fugazi. All right. But, I mean, you're going to tell me that if your team won the championship, you'd celebrate any less? No. Like, you know, it's, you know, here's what I find the funniest about it, right? You have Giannis Antetokounmpo, Paul George, two great players. People may call them, you know, Giannis is a top five player, top six. Playoff P. Paul, Paul George is top 15, top 20, whatever you want to put them in. These are two guys on record telling you they couldn't handle it, that they mentally couldn't handle it. Giannis couldn't handle being in a place where he saw the people who kicked his ass and couldn't deal with the media scrutiny. I don't understand how you have great players in this league tell you that they couldn't handle something, and yet the Heat go and they thrive in it, and it somehow looked upon as life was easier for them. It doesn't make sense to me. You have LeBron James, LeBron James, tell you. Now, I know he's narrative king. Trust me. (laughs) Nobody knows that more than me. But you have LeBron James telling you it was one of the two hardest championships ever won. 
He says, I've won the two toughest championships in NBA history. I won the bubble championship, and I won coming down 3-1 against a 73-win Warriors team. But And that title was worth like three because it did it with right, Cleveland. Right, right, right. So you have him telling you, I won the two toughest championships. And people, they ate this up. Like it was like it was a like it was a, a, a souffle. Oh, LeBron, you're right. Come on. Oh, he says it's the top. So let me get this straight. So Giannis couldn't handle it. Paul George couldn't handle it. LeBron's telling you it's the toughest championship ever won. But the Heat are bubble frauds because life was easy for them. Come on. But why did they do it against Miami? That's why. Because they like to just take our shine, Robbie. Because you guys can't have the ass models, the great weather, and a and a legitimate season. Has to be fraudulent. Everybody else gets to claim it was the most difficult thing they've ever been through. You have teams that couldn't handle it. You have guys getting kicked out because they're having sex with COVID nurses. Oh, they yeah. can't even. They can't. They can't. They can't deal with being being locked up in the bubble or being in a bubble and being and being cut off from the outside world. Lemon Pepper Lou, Daniel House, Lemon Pepper Lou. You have all these people who couldn't handle it, but but the Heat they handled it better than anybody. You say, wow, you didn't deal with fans. Oh, really? Really? You think Mitchell in Milwaukee is giving Jimmy Butler problems? Nah, bro. I'm thinking it's actually. I think it's. I think it's actually probably Giannis actually having the guts to defend him this time or around. Bryn Forbes, <laughs> or Bryn Forbes, or that giant ostrich. I see him at Lion Country Safari. Brooke Lopez, <laughs> tack my car. <laughs> uh, as Stolen McRib says on Twitch, hard times, Daddy. Getting swept. Listen, getting swept is hard times, Daddy. The season is over. Um, in a lot of ways, mercifully, in a lot of ways, mercifully, as, as you were, you were getting slapped in the face with, uh, reality as the, uh, as the series was going on, certainly, uh, certainly feels like a sense of relief that it's over in a lot of ways, but it's, listen, it's disappointing and embarrassing, uh, just as much too. I mean, you go from a team that's in the finals to a team that gets swept in the first round, understandably, uh, against, I think, um, you know, probably, I think the Heat out of the out of you know the teams that maybe you thought were decent definitely got the toughest draw with taking on Milwaukee, but you know that's their motto. Anybody, anytime, anywhere. They don't like playing the uh, the the seeding game or any of that type of stuff. And also, there were plenty of games this season against uh, terrible teams. They lost where you know it cost them, and they probably could have been they probably should have been more solidified in that four spot than uh, than they did, but. It also speaks to how inconsistent they were this year. This was a uh, this was a team that, you know, had plenty of shortcomings as far as the roster was concerned, consistency standpoint. You know, Bam talked about a lot of that in the uh, in the post game, just about how much change there was this season because Bam was basically there for all the games, other than uh, I think a couple of Philly games uh, where he was out for health and safety, where you know it was basically Tyler Hero and Precious Achua. And by the way. Uh, that was that was another big disappointment that I had this year is that I felt like they really uh, I thought they really effed up with Precious Achua not figuring out what was uh, what was a, a good situation. I know it was a bit of a lost season because he didn't have summer league, he didn't have a G League team to go to. He probably would have ended up being on those teams, but I think they basically tried to make him Bam Junior. And I don't think he's that. I don't know. I look at a guy and I think that that guy is. Uh, I think that the guy is not is not suited to be even a small ball center. I don't think that's what he's going to be. I think he's going to end up being somebody who's out on the wing a little bit more. I think he likes to go and initiate uh, a little bit more. Maybe they don't think he could be that. I don't know. But every time you see those flashes of him being super athletic, like they found a way to make Derek Jones Jr. work. The guy, the, the guy weighs 150 pounds soaking wet, basically jumps as high as him, but he's actually built like something. So I hope that 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 that's a that's a that's a a well spent project during the uh, during the off season. Go ahead and hit the ID, Robbie. Oh, you can already see that one coming down the line. Do we have a new call? Is yeah, that, we got uh, stolen McRib. Stolen McRib. What's up, man? Uh, that's uh, what does he hey. got to say? Hey guys, uh, what's up? First, shout out to Platinum Swords and his really cool <laughs> voice. Man, I can't believe bad enough to get swept. On Monday, we have to hear Ryan Clark and National Pundits ripping <laughs> Tua all over again. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. But, I'm st- he was dying to get to that Ryan Clark sound, so I wanted to, to get to Are you guys, like, is this the thing? Because I'm not, admittedly, the Twitch chat moves so fast all the time, I can't follow it. Are you guys just daring each other to call in? 
Uh, more or less, you know. Jay Fu's yeah, also yeah. calling some of us out. So. <laughs> All right, I like it. Is that, is that what you're doing, Jay Fu? You're trying to initiate the Twitches to call in so we can get to know them. I cannot confirm that. I would like, yeah, I would like a fun fact of all Twitchers uh, when they when they yes. please call in. I would like to learn about our Twitchers to uh, to to see what they what, what we can uh, what we can find about them. Uh, let's see, let's see. Texter writes in, okay, Tobin, you're right. Just like you were about Bob, you sir suck. You are the worst. Now eh, listen, is that that makes you feel better, man? Text away whatever your uh, your Twitter fingers need to or your text fingers need to say. To get you going, we got another pokey. All right, what do we got, we Robbie? Vanessa, she's calling in. No, oh, Vanessa. Pope, Pope. Yes, Sam, what a hard weekend, man. What a hard weekend. Yeah. I blame yes. you. What? So much sleep <laughs> loss. Husbands, husbands laughing at me all the time, calling us buff boys. Just whatever, man. We'll get them next year. We'll get them next year. We'll get him next year. Listen, we'll bounce back. And uh, who is your husband a fan of again? Oh, damn it. I dropped her. My bad. That's all right. I think, I she's, I, she I, think can... I remember her husband's a jazz fan. He's a jazz fan? Yes. A jazz fan? Yes. So he stole Dwayne Wade from us? <laughs> yes. You rat fink. Well, shout out to Vanessa. <laughs> Great Twitcher there. Uh, and I that like is... that our Twitch community is uh, is all calling. Look. A lot of you are blaming. What do you want me to go? You, like I asked this, I asked this of you guys last week. Do you want me to be the guy who is is going to be like, well, I don't really like our chances. We don't, uh, we didn't look good all this shit. That's not how I'm ever going to be, guys. I don't know what to tell you. And you guys keep asking me to learn my lesson. I, I I'm not. I don't know what to tell you. When I get, I've, I'm the same guy who is going to call somebody a baby deer and have to eat crow. I'm the same guy. <laughs> Who's going to get into bets with Australian members of parliament and lose and lose uh, bets to sixes? But sometimes I'm going to be spot on, and we're going to have amazing runs to the finals. Sometimes, sometimes I didn't hear any of you yelling at me last year when I was nailing predictions left and right willy nilly. You did have the Heat and Jazz in the finals last year. The irony that was your finals pick last last year. <laughs> it was. It was my finals pick last year. <laughs> this year I was a little bit off, but listen, we're going to revamp. We're going to get Kawhi Leonard. Maybe Bradley Beal too, and uh, we're gonna nail this thing. Yeah, we'll Bradley, have Bradley... a, full, a full off season of rest too. There's not like you know. Too yeah, much you know, I know, I know the big. Of the didn't even know what month it was. It'll be great. Everyone and, needs and, to be about the off season too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Listen, the, listen, the off season is gonna be a big deal though. Like especially, I mean, like especially for like Tyler or if it's and, and for Bam, I think it is gonna be a big deal. Those guys didn't get an off season, and I think I think we actually saw Bam. Do some things, expand this game. Look, he had a bad series, no doubt. Like, they shook him out of his shoes. But I would say for Bam, um, even though he didn't have a good series, like, dude, we've seen that. We've seen we've seen really great players get schemed out in playoff series uh, who are way more decorated than Bam is. You know, one of them being uh, LeBron James. So it happens. Um, you know, guys, guys, ha- guys can have playoff stinkers. I, I, I think to write the guy off as a player at his age is, uh, is, is, is silly. Speaking Who else suspe- is on the line? Oh, we got Chicken Lips Tobin, another bogey on the line. Chicken Lips Tobin. Yo, what's going on, guys? Hello. What's up? Man, that's it. <laughs> Hard times, Daddy. Hard times Hard right now. Hard what's times, my friend. Now? We need uh, the, the, I love the how random fact the, the 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 Twitch community has taken over the uh, yeah. the the uh, the call line for sure. Did you dump him, Rob? Is he still there? No, I just tried to cut him off. Uh, all right. <laughs> no, no, I'm remembering why we don't take calls. <laughs> uh, texter writes in. Uh, texter writes in. Toby, question: Are we finally going to be able to see an open space at the end of the bench? Minus one to that guy, Robbie. Oh, minus one to that guy. Minus. And by one. the way, and by the way, uh. I saw this. I, 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 I mean, anybody who is getting mad at Udonis Haslam for freaking out on his teammates uh, after they gave up a lead and and showed absolutely no guts and throwing a chair. I'm glad Udonis Haslam did it. Like I don't know what to tell you. And again, I keep I keep going to the point of if everybody on the team seems to love having him there. Why does anybody on the why do any fans have a problem with it? I don't understand that. Um, 
who's the guy that just signed Robbie? The dude number seventy seven. Who is that guy? Oh, oh. Her, 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 it's a weird name. Weird, weird name. I know what you're talking about. Exactly. That guy's on the Miami Heat, and you're telling me that you'd rather have that project there than Udonis has him. Like, that is what you're missing it out for because you don't play more than nine guys in the playoffs anyway. I don't understand why this continues to be a thing that bothers Heat fans. I don't know if it's you just want to completely erase the past or why you think it's a problem that Udonis Haslam is on the team, but I'm glad that there is somebody there that has that bridge from the coaching staff to the to the players. I don't understand why when we always find issues with the team or we're always upset with the team, the Udonis Haslam thing always seems to be a thing. It's silly to me. It's silly. You are. You, it's going to be a player. It's going to be Struess, Gabe Vincent, number 77. I don't even know what his name is. And Bialica. Yeah, you're at seven. What are we talking? What are we talking about? What's his name? Yeah, Shmita says his name is future MVP. You're at seven. <laughs> you're at seven. You're at seven. No wonder he's number 77. Ah. <laughs> But like, what, just, what, like, what was the criticism of UD? Was like, oh, was it all for show? Or like, what, what was the the criticism? Dude, it was. I, I, I'll tell you exactly this scene because I don't think everybody saw everything that happened. But what had happened was, is Udonis has them when Jimmy Butler got stuffed at the rim by Brooke Lopez for the gazillionth time. Uh, he <laughs> he laid down. It was great because you know how they have those barriers, J fig at the game that the, 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 in front of the bench, they have like that barrier. Now it's not just the players are open in front. So UD right. sit. So UD sits on that. Right. And then as soon as Jimmy got blocked at the rim again, he just lays down like this, just lays down, you know, he lays down. And then, uh, on the other end, I think bam. Oh, it was, it was, it was a jump in. It was, I think it was Chris Middleton jumping into bam. For like a ticky tack call, and you know Ed Malloy, what are you gonna do? Dude's a true, a oh, true charlatan. It was that staff, so you had no chance. But um, so the UD then, Foster. so Bam starts going at the ref, and UD pulls Bam out of the way because he doesn't want Bam to get kicked out of the game or doesn't want Bam to get a technical. So ba- he sends Bam back to the bench, and he starts going at the official. So I think he was heated about going at the official. He then walks over and then starts going at the team. So he was giving the business to everybody in that scenario. We got another. We got, I guess we could speak. Can we speak one more bogey before we have to go to break for 15 minutes each? Yep. Who do we got? This is a texter, Alejandro. So I feel like we got a war brewing. Oh, a war brewing between the texters and Twitchers. Alejandro, what's going on? What's up, guys? Glad to have you on on this uh, Memorial Day representing the Texas here. I want to know what's the old heart team, the chances of the old heart team getting. A Kawhi Leonard down here in Miami. All right. I'm going to put it at a uh, and your and your phone stunk, Alejandro, which yeah. is not a good representation of the text. Oh, but <laughs> either way, it was a fine question. We will talk about uh, we will talk about what the harpoons will sharpen to do and uh, what's coming up later today for the Heat as well. We'll give you back to 15 minutes of Heat coming up. I'll be the last one.